SpaceX has enabled Starlink customers to edit their own service address, potentially letting them take Starlink on the road easier than ever before. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on SpaceX's Starlink. This is SpaceX's massive satellite um, broadband internet constellation that is slowly rolling out and it is beta form right now. Now, one of the big catches for Starlink for anybody who is nomadic in any fashion is that when you sign up for Starlink, you give them a service address and your service is pretty much locked to that address. People have been testing this, trying to take their Starlink service on the road and have discovered that Starlink will drop off sometimes as little as 11 miles or so from your home service address because of just the way the network is set up. When you are assigned to Starlink, you are assigned a home service cell and the satellites only pay attention to your dish if you are inside that cell. You leave the cell, no connection, even if you're someplace else where there's plenty of active Starlink service. Now, up until recently, to take Starlink anywhere outside of your home cell, you actually had to go contact Starlink customer service via email and request a new address. And if they approve your new address, a couple days later, it'll flip off where you're currently at and flip on at that new location. You know, great if you're moving someplace for a season, but not at all suitable for our RVers who want to travel from place to place to place and um, you know, have any sort of capability to actually enjoy that traveling. So what's new is St uh, SpaceX has taken that customer service rep out of the equation and just over the past week they have um, quietly rolled out on the Starlink customer portal the ability to edit your own service address. You can put in an address just by you know typing it out as you normally would. You can use plus codes which is a uh, Google's kind of shortcut to enter GPS coordinates with an easy way to look them up on Google Maps. You could actually enter GPS coordinates or you could even bring up a satellite map, zoom out and find where you want to be, zoom in and put drop the Starlink service right onto your favorite remote boondocking sites. Wow, this is great. You know, the we tested this, the change takes effect in just about 20 minutes your current location turns off and presumably the service in the new location comes on. This is wonderful. Finally, you could take Starlink on the road, at least for our viewers. You could, it's a portable system. You could take it wherever you want to go. But there is a very, very big catch. Um, first off, Starlink doesn't have anywhere close to 100% coverage of the United States yet. They are only offering service and have coverage in parts of um, the northern states. You know, they haven't even begun to drop you know, further south than Colorado or Kansas yet. Um, so. There's only certain areas where the system will accept your address as having coverage, otherwise it will just reject the change. And, well, even more critically, is they have major capacity issues. Right now, Starlink is in early beta form, and quite a few of the places you might think, hey, I know this area, this town, this, this national forest has Starlink servers. I know somebody else up there who's already using Starlink. If you try to change your address to that location, the system will, in our testing, so many places will come up as saying, sorry, cannot change your address, we do not have capacity. So, um, in theory, Starlink is a lot more uh, nomad friendly, mobile friendly right now. You can take it with you wherever you want to go, adjust the address, and well, assuming that the address is accepted, you can get online from a lot more places. Um, now we have been actually testing the turning on and off and moving uh, Starlink service, and we have discovered it is when you do find a place that is marked as having coverage and not over capacity, um, while you don't have a map, you can't check this out and scout in advance. You can just submit new addresses. And if it goes through, the service at your current address will then you know, turn off within 10 or 20 minutes. So keep this in mind if you're experimenting, trying to scout out where you're next going to take your Starlink. If Starlink is your only way online where you're currently at, you might be about to pull the plug on yourself. So, And also, because of the capacity concerns, keep in mind that if you take Starlink out on a trip and you successfully take it to a few new locations, when you return to your home address, your, your previous home address, your fixed base, maybe the cell that you started in is now at capacity. Somebody else might have claimed your slot and you might not be able to come home and reactivate your service, at least not without getting Starlink customer service involved. Right. This is so, still beta service. This is still service focused on residential users. They are still launching lots of satellites, and even once they launch the satellites, it takes months for them to reach their final orbits. So 
there is a lot more coverage, a lot more capacity, a lot more other things coming down the road. Right now, Starlink is not practically very nomad friendly, but they're making some major strides in that direction. Now, one other thing people will be asking us is, well, okay, that's, that's great for RVers. It's portable. You can take it to places and set it up now. What about on boats, like, like where we are right now, floating in a lake? In our testing, in the current Starlink receivers will turn off and they'll shut themselves down and require a full power cycle reboot if they detect any physical motion. So you can take them to new locations, set them up on the ground, you know, solid, firm ground, turn them on, and with the address matches their assigned cell, they will work. But if you were to assign your cell out here to the middle of the lake, Set it up, it might work for a little while, but as the boat starts to rotate or rock, the dish will detect motion, it will shut down. Starlink is not boat friendly yet. Um, boat friendliness, mobility, that will require them to have a new FCC license, potentially new hardware entirely, and potentially even new service plans. This is something that we covered last month. SpaceX has applied with the FCC for this appropriate license. They've talked about future hardware that will be real mobile and in motion compatible, but that is not here today. What is new today is the ability to change your fixed terrestrial service address. This is still not boat appropriate, but a lot closer to being a mobile solution for our viewers, a portable solution for our viewers. Mine. This is still beta, this is still early, and um, there are a lot of gotchas to potentially, you know, what might hit you if you take this service on, on the road with you. So we tracked some of the gotchas in the article that goes along with this video, check it out. And um, again, there's a lot of people who are sharing their experiences as they try this out. It's an exciting future for this, but keep in mind all the limitations. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.